Welcome back to CTV Morning Live. There's a look at how you can get a hold of us for our Ask the Expert se segment with Brenda Hollingsworth from OJ Hollingsworth at 613-789-6559, extension 2803. You can always send us a message as well or a question via our email, via our Facebook or our Twitter page as well. So we were talking uh, about uh, accident benefits and uh, very, very briefly before we get to the, to the phone, you've made the call, you filled out the application, you send it back. That's right. You send it back. Usually there's a form that your physician is supposed to fill out as well. It's really important that you get a doctor to fill out that form. People are, uh, the form says you can get a physiotherapist or a psychologist, um, but those kinds of health professionals tend to look at a narrow picture. Your family doctor is always the best person to fill out the, uh, the OCF3, it's called, the disability certificate. Because there's a bigger spectrum, and as I've learned over the last number of years doing this, uh, often months later, or uh, depression, there, there's sure. a variety of things that can affect you if there's been a change to the lifestyle, change to the work habits, to injuries that happen later on. Right, and so the big mistake is getting a physiotherapist to fill out that first form, and they focus on your whiplash, which is their job but they miss the psychological piece or the concussion or that kind of thing. So family doctor. And then very, I want to just touch on the time frames because time frames play a role in this. Right. And so you're supposed to complete your accident benefit application within 30 days. Now, if you're outside the 30 days, it's not like some of the other limitation periods we talk about where you're out of luck, but really, uh, you know, to get things rolling, you should be doing it within 30 days, if at all possible. If it's later than 30 days, do it ASAP. Okay. Someone who did something a little while ago, I do believe is on the phone. Uh, I do believe, Julie, are you there? Janet, sorry, Janet? Hi. Hi, good morning. I know you morning, have a question uh, for Brenda. Hi, Brenda. Hi. Um, I'll try to make my story short. Um, I fell in Mexico in 2011. Uh, the caulking was missing in the shower of the door of my husband's. And water was pouring out. I went in and went flying, and my ankle twisted the other side. Okay. I had surgery in Mexico. Um, I came back to Canada. I've had nothing but surgery since. I settled for a very small amount because they told me, take this or leave it. It'll take years. I'm now going in February for a fusion. Uh, I've retired from work. Uh, my whole life has been upside down. I'm living right now on cortisone shots which I have to now get a fusion because the cortisone shots aren't working anymore. Do I have the right to go back, and is there somebody that can help me to go back for a, a larger settlement on this? Well, um, I mean, the number one issue is that it's a, a Mexican accident, so you would ultimately want to get the advice of a Mexican lawyer. But most of the time, if you settle your case, you've signed a release that says that you're barred from going back for any future amounts so that's why when we try to settle, we are uh, we're very clear with the clients, like make sure you've reached maximum medical recovery because a lot of times people feel like Janet feels, which is, you know, I've got to take this or I'm going to get nothing. And usually that's not the case. Um, usually, um, you know, you can ultimately go to court. So taking an early settlement just to get it done with can lead to you being exactly in Janet's situation, which is, is unfortunate. This is very difficult, though, because circumstances have changed since she had that surgery or since she left Mexico. Right, but the thing is, you um, you know, you want to have a medical person tell you you've reached maximum medical recovery, right? I doubt she had that. Um, I doubt somebody told her, a medical person told you, yeah, you're, you know, you're as good as it's going to get. She probably didn't ask that question because people don't know to ask that question. They are feeling the pressure from the insurance company saying take it or leave it and they don't realize that you know you can push it further and they don't realize the importance of max maximum medical recovery uh, and, and in this situation and I'm sure there are plenty of other viewers uh, at home who have dealt with incidences that haven't happened here in Ontario uh, or in Canada and have happened uh, in other countries so what happens then well it, it depends sometimes if the if the uh, trip is run by a Canadian-based tour company. Uh, sometimes there is recourse that you can bring against the Canadian company. And we do see cases like that. And, you know, if you have a case like that, give us a call. We can give you sort of uh, particular advice. So sometimes there is a way. When you're dealing, though, you know, if you call up Mexico and book a hotel in Mexico and there's no Canadian connection, you're dealing with Mexican law or Cuban law or wherever, Barbadian law. Um, and you're going to need a lawyer from that jurisdiction because law is generally 
uh, jurisdiction based that Ontario lawyer can act in Ontario uh, and so I'm sure there's lots of you, different people who have been in that situation and then realize that it's it's, it's become a little bit out of, out of their hands but right. a lot of information here uh, we're gonna get to, to more questions coming up after the break if you do have the questions to send in uh, send them in via Facebook via our email via Twitter and of course you can give us the call live on the air just like Janet did 789-6559 extension 2803